it is not just the $899 or whatever you're paying per square foot for your engineered flooring. Your total cost, as we all know, could add up to much more. I'm going to break down these misconceptions by showing you what's involved. So you got to talk about what are you putting your floor on? Regardless if you're doing solid wood or engineered, and I always recommend engineered, it's better for wear and movement. But you gotta think about the substructure. What is this floor being put on? It's like your foundation. You wanna put the floor, the new flooring that you're purchasing, on top of a good foundation. And what is that? You basically have two different types of foundation. You either have a concrete footing, and then you're gonna put in another layer and your wood floor with glue, or you have a wood joist structure that you're gonna build up, and you're gonna put your wood flooring on top of that. So let's break down those two versions. Whoa, <laughs> we didn't nail down this plywood yet. I'm doing a little dance for you. So we have, in this particular case, we have a wood joist substructure, if you take out what's happening here around me. So what does that mean, wood joist substructure? Sounds very complicated, we're gonna break it down. It's so not. So you basically have big wooden beams that either run vertical or horizontal, whether it's a single family home or a New York skyscraper, right? Especially in an older area, it would be wood. And these joists are big beams that run across. On top of that, you have a play floor. So they put down two by fours, rising the floor and leveling it. Then on top of that, you put your plywood. So what you really want to pay attention to, a tip for your contractor or vendor, whoever you're hiring, make sure they're using grade A lumber on top of your wooden joist. So that's the two by four and that's the plywood. Grade A or grade B, no less. You don't want any warping, less knots. You definitely don't want to do the chip board as well because then you're going to have more movement on the floor. So that's an expense, right? You're going to put a plywood and you're going to put rails or these two by fours on top of the joist. So there's an expense. So point number two is membrane. So membrane is that three eighths fiber. It's actually a rubber mat, you know, kind of like when you go to the gym and you see the rubber matting across the entire floor. Well, that's great to have over your plywood like we have the plywood here. So you wanna glue that down on top. And why, you may ask, because it has a lot of benefits, but the two major benefits that a membrane layer has is it adds a sound absorbing layer between the joists, concrete, and your wood flooring, so that's great. And second thing it does, it cushions the floor, so the floor actually bounces. You know how I was bouncing on this wood earlier? It the, gives the floor a little give, and believe it or not, it's easier on your joints. So when you're walking or running, you don't feel it so harsh on your joints if the floor is giving slightly. So I definitely recommend, recommend <laughs> membrane. Think of all of those things I just mentioned. Substructure floor, plywood, glue, membrane. All those costs are gonna be added to your flooring costs. You, know, you typically go into a flooring store or you see online and you can get a decent engineered floor right nowadays for probably around eight bucks a square foot all the way to 20, 25, 30 for the customs. So you think, okay, that's not so bad. Divide that cost times the square footage. So you may ask, why do I need to go down to my substructure? Well, we're on that plywood and it's not nailed down. <laughs> the one of the things you want to think about is what's underneath. So if you hear your floor creaking really bad, you know, we have all been on those old creaky floors where they're kind of making noise and they're going eh, and eh, uh, and eh or your floor's really unlevel and it's bowing. And we have a lot of that in New York City in the older loft buildings or some of the old high rises and the floor's really sloped and we wanna change that. So in order to correct either the really heavy creaking or the dips in the floor, we've gotta take it out and go down to the substructure, which is your joist, your wooden joist, or in this case, we have steel beams that are playing as our joist. And we're gonna lay on top of that. And that, I think, is the number one thing. If you're gonna put really good flooring down and you're gonna spend all this money and then build everything on top of the floors, keep in mind, your walls, your whole home is built on top of those floors. If the floors are giving and they're not structurally sound, they're making noise or they're warped, you gotta go down to the substructure. So we're coming down to the million dollar question, right? What is all of this cost? So you have your flooring cost. So the materials themselves, again, between I would see eight dollars a square foot for a decent entry level engineered floor all the way up to 30 40 depending upon how custom you're going to get I think a good range though in today's market depending upon where you are in the country of course but is around 12 to 15 is a really good range for a nice 
wear level engineered floor. Second thing you got to consider is breaking down the cost of all the substructure. So you probably have maybe, and again, depending upon where you are, I want to gauge somewhere around $5 a square foot for demolition and carting of your existing flooring. And that includes the subfloor. So going down to the subfloor material. And that is really based on if it's glued or nailed. Those prices may vary depending upon how many layers of subfloor you have and how glued together they are. It could almost double. But I think five to seven dollars a square foot arranged for carding and demo is great. And then you're talking about replacing the plywood and the membrane. So two different costs. Your plywood grade A, grade B, really good plywood. Doesn't have to be finished plywood, mind you. Your labor and materials should probably be around five to seven dollars a square foot. Uh, again, and that's depending upon in the country where you live. And then your membrane. The membrane cost is usually around three to four dollars a square foot, plus your labor should be around three dollars to four dollars a square foot, again, <laughs> depending upon where you are. And then your glue. The glue's pricey here, guys. Glue can run up to five hundred dollars per five gallon. And another tip while I'm thinking about it, there's some eco-friendly versions of the glues today that will keep your VOC uh, really down in your home so you don't have to worry about toxic levels. So when you're purchasing glue for the flooring especially, look at non-VOC or very low VOC glues. And they're going to be around four to $500 per five gallon. So we're going to do the numbers really quickly, right? We got maybe, I'm going to say 10 bucks a square foot for your flooring. Then you're going to add on another $5 a square foot for demolition and carding, maybe seven. So let's say we got 17 bucks a square foot. Then you're going to add on, if you're going to do the substructure, you're going to add on the other $5 a square foot for plywood, another $3 a square foot for labor. So we got 17 and five, that's 22. Another three for the labor, that's 25. We're going to add in our membrane, which is roughly between three and $4 a square foot, let's say high. So now we got $29 a square foot. And then we have the glue itself. Glues per square foot is probably going to be, it depends on how many square feet, but let's say you add on another two to $3,000 for glue. So you probably got around $30 a square foot for your flooring all in. And then you're looking at, you know, obviously your vendors are going to add on a commission cost on top of that. So I think a good range to say from soup to nuts, from subfloor up, you're probably going to have about $35, $37 a square foot, depending upon where you are in the country for your overall flooring budget. So some of us have concrete floors as a subfloor and we think, oh, I don't really have to do anything. You don't wanna lay your floor right on top. If you're in New York City, I know most of us are, but if you are, most buildings are gonna mandate that you put in a membrane, which I highly recommend. But even if you don't, you have concrete floors somewhere, you're gonna rip up your old flooring. I want you to think about are they going to need sanding before you put glue down? Most likely, yes. If you're going to rip out the floors and they were glued directly to the concrete, you rip it all up, it pits the floor a little bit, then you have an unleveled surface. So you may have to put a self-leveling, which is like a little thin layer of concrete, before you put your floors in. Or if you want to adjust the height of the floor and it's concrete, self-leveling, which is a cement you put over the top. After that, you're going to want to think about putting the membrane. If you have enough depth, between maybe your door jams and your floor, I highly recommend doing it on concrete. It's gonna give the floor a little bounce like this. It's gonna help on your joints. It's also gonna help with bouncing sound around. So you wanna put a 3 8 layer of this, this uh, rubber ice thing I told you about like in a gym. You're gonna glue that down, glue on top, then you're gonna glue your floor to all that. And that is a substructure for concrete floors. So we covered a lot of information in your flooring and I'm gonna break it down for you once again so we can all remember, including myself. We talked about substructure and why we wanna replace the substructure or if you even need to. And then we broke down plywood, membrane and glue and the cost of all above so you can think when I go to purchase my floors, it's not just about the flooring material and the labor to install, it's what we're installing it on and do we need to replace it.